Thank you. Remember these three incredible people as a community. We will laugh and we will cry. And in the end, we will together show JJ, Lexi, and Carly that they are loved and will never be alone. Days like today remind me that life is a sum of defining moments. Some positive and some gut-wrenching painful. Some that you just want to think about and smile, and some that cause you to cry. Some that you cherish and hold on to, and some you just want to forget. One defining moment that I will always cherish and hold on to was in February of 2012. That was the day that I got to meet Coach Alto for the very first time. He had graciously decided to dedicate opening day of that season to my 12-year-old daughter, Jessie, who had just lost her, lost her fight to cancer. At that moment, I was a broken dad, just trying to breathe. When I arrived at the field, Coach greeted me and my son, and he gave me this massive hug. That is one of the things, among many, many things, I'm gonna miss is an alto hug. If you ever got one, you knew that you got a great, great hug. After our tear-filled embrace near third base, he shared how sorry he was, and then he shared that he would do anything and everything to make sure our family was supported. For the next eight years, Coach fulfilled his promise and always made his team and his family available to help in our, with our foundation in any way possible. Year after year, they would show up no matter what the task. One year, we needed to move these very, very large shelves. And so Coach brought the boys down and the shelves got moved. After they moved the shelves, Coach said, wait a minute, Eric, the vacuum, when the, when the carpet's dirty, would you have a vacuum? I was like, sure. He's like, okay, boys, on it. It was never something too small for his players, for his family. They're the most generous people that I've ever met. And I think about it is because from my vantage point, he loved helping his players learn about life off the field. Sure, Alto loved to win, but he also loved to teach. And he used every moment to teach his team and his players that the greatest thing, that the way, greatest way to define sex, success, excuse me. That's really bad, but that was funny. Yes, Alto loved all kinds of things. <laughs> but the greatest way to define success is by what you give, not by what you get. And that's what Alto did all the time, was give. Days like today also remind me to thank God for the gift of time that he gave us with John Kerry and Melissa, three of his great creations. Yes, their time on earth was cut way too short. But that should remind us never to take life for granted and to truly, truly appreciate each day. Last Thursday, over 500 people gathered on the lawns outside of Mariner's Church to light candles in honor of Alyssa. During the gathering, some friends read an autobiography poem that Alyssa had written called Where I'm From, I'm going to quote, I'm from holiday parties and competition. I'm from John and Carrie. I'm from comedians. I'm from athletes. I'm from let's go outside and stay aloft electronics. I'm from Christians, children of God, end quote. Because John, Carrie, and Alyssa knew God and knew how knew they were created by God, they did whatever they could to make the world a little better and a little brighter. And I think any of you that have ever had a chance to intersect with any of those three people, you would say your life is a little better and a little brighter. 
Finally, days like today remind me that I have to trust God and hold on to heaven. When my daughter lost her fight to cancer, I kept asking God, why? I just didn't understand why he needed her in heaven more than I wanted her on earth. To be honest, I still don't understand, but I'm not God. So I'm left daily with a choice, to be bitter or believe in God and try my best to be better. As a Christian, I believe in the Bible and John chapter 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. With God's daily grace and strength, I choose to believe that heaven is real and that I will see my daughter again and I will see John Altabelli, Carrie Altabelli, and Alyssa Altabelli. I hope we all choose to live our lives and honor them Honor Alto, honor Carrie, and honor Alyssa, and believe in God the way that they did. So life can be a little brighter and a little better, too. JJ and Lexi, I really have no words. I'm so sorry. We are all here for you, and we love you. The best thing I can do is repeat what your dad shared to me eight years ago near third base. I am so sorry, but we will always be here with you and always be here for you. May you never feel alone and may you always feel loved. Let's pray. God, we do love you. We thank you for loving John and Carrie and Alyssa three of your great creations. We miss them so much. Please comfort their family as we celebrate them today. Lord, give them strength, joy, and peace every day of their lives. Lord, help them never feel alone and always feel loved. And God, we hold on to the power of Jesus Christ and the hope of heaven. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for your son. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Please watch this. Today is Alto's favorite day. Opening day. He loved opening day. On opening day, he was always here super early, but today I beat him to the field. Uh, and it's going to be the only time that I ever do. Today, the Pirates of Orange Coast College will open their 2020 season. The stadium, known as the house that Alto built. When I say this is the house that Alto built, he didn't do it lightly. This was his dream job, and, and he loved every second of this job. decades, the team will be taking the field for opening day without the man who defined this program. I would describe him as the Kobe Bryant in college baseball because he knew how to win. You ready to go? You ready to go? Your teammate? Yep. I know that he's proud of our guys for being out here today. Have fun today, boys. And we're going to do the best we can to honor him in everything we do moving forward.
steps away from the field. John Altavelli's office sits uncharacteristically silent and still. An unbelievable family man, an unbelievable baseball coach. He's the one I wanted to be when I grew up. And uh, I guess at this point, I'm 49 years old, I still want to be that person. For the last 27 years, Altavelli was the head baseball coach at Orange Coast College. He won more than 700 games. And four state championships. Here's the payoff. Call strike three. The Pirates, they are your 2014 champions. What kind of values did he stand for? relationship with every team is always the same. He always loves his guys. He, he treats them with the utmost respect. He's the kind of coach that I wanted to be. What your son did this year is nothing short of amazing. The reason why he was a coach was to positively impact a lot of those guys and give them the chance to be successful not only on the baseball field, but just afterwards as a husband, as a father. That's what he really wanted from his players. That's what he expected of himself, too. Carrie came into our lives when I was in sixth grade. And seeing them be together, uh, me and her would play basketball in the backyard at our old house. Uh, and we'd play for money. Uh, and I think that might have been one of the reasons that she really, I really started liking her, because no offense, but she wasn't the she wasn't the best athlete, uh, but the first time I met her, I just remember telling my dad well, when he asked me what I thought, and I said, you need to marry this girl. John and Carrie had two daughters, Alexis and Alyssa. They were a baseball family at heart, but also his youngest took a different path. 13-year-old Alyssa excelled playing point guard for the Mambas. An elite eighth grade travel team. Coached by Kobe Bryant. Playing on Kobe Bryant's team, you get a lot of recognition. People already had her going to Oregon on the scholarship, and I was the one that was there to, to try to make sure she stayed level-headed. Did you ever play one-on-one -on -one with the two of you? All the time. Did she kick your ass? No shot. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> but of all the family memories, some of the best were in Cape Cod, where they could all be together. That's something that uh, Carrie, Lexi, and Lissa really enjoy about Cape Cod was they liked the baseball part of it, but I think they enjoyed just Cape Cod itself, really. I mean, they had a goal to try to every ice cream place on the Cape. And they did it on a daily basis, and I know that they had their favorites, and uh, it's something that they, they really love to do. I wanted to work out. He goes, okay, well, if you want to work out, you got to come with me. I said, okay, that's fine, what time? And he goes, well, I'm gonna work out at about six in the morning. It's like, okay. So, you know, we'd go, and one time I asked him, I go, why, why do you work out so early? And he goes, well, if I don't, then when I come back, you know, if I work out at eight or something like that, the girls are up and I, I, I've missed hanging out with you for an hour. He goes, I try to make sure that I get my workout done, and by the time I get back, I have enough time to hang out with them before the game. Um, you know, and then as soon as the game's over, right back to being a dad. What kinds of things did you see? Love, 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 and just a joy for life, for all of them. I think the coolest part was that we got to um, hang out a lot. You know, we got to hang out after the games, on off days, go to the beach together. It was just a really good experience. And him and JJ, had, they had a special relationship. Baseball was their bond. But uh, 
those girls had a really special place in his heart, all three. You've been talking about values that your father and the other important people in your life gave you. What's special about the fact that from these people you got these values that you can then pass on to the world like them? Yeah, no, I think it's uh, really important to who I've become as a person, as a man, um, as how I'm going to be as a husband, uh, and in the role I'm going to serve for Lexi going forward. I just think that. That's so important. I mean, you can have, you can be really successful and you can do a lot of things um, in life, but if you're not a good person and not doing things for the right reason and you don't treat everybody with respect, then none of that else, none of that matters. So that's just something that I know, I, I know Lexi already has that inside her. Um, she's literally has the biggest heart. Um, so I know that she's going to continue to do that. It's been unreal, the, the amount of support and love that our family has gotten in this situation. And it just, again, just shows how special that my dad, Carrie, and Alyssa all were. Spending time with John and his family, seeing the years pass, watching our respective children grow and flourish, gave us pause to occasionally sit down, have a beer, count our gray hairs, and agree that we were two pretty fortunate guys. And even talk about what the next chapter in life may bring for us and our family. But in the blink of an eye, 
the world changed. Over the past two weeks, I've had some time to reflect on my years with Alto. What was it about Alto as a person that created this lasting bond and friendship for decades? The answer was pretty straightforward. The same qualities and characteristics that guided John as a teacher on the field, a teacher in the classroom, a coach on the field, a father, a husband, a mentor, was the same as a friend. What were those words? Loyalty, trust, respect, work ethic, and love. Powerful words, but Alto backed them up every day. You will undoubtedly hear some of those same words used by others speaking today about John, as well as Carrie and Lissa. Those same traits can be found in Lexi and JJ. Alto, Carrie, and Lissa are not here with us today in person, but how they live their lives and the positive influence that they had upon me is here today. From Alyssa's infectious smile and drive as a fierce competitor, to Carrie's passion and dedication to be the best mother and wife to her family, to Alto's continuous commitment to make a difference in young people's lives. The three of them touched us in so many ways and made us better persons. They touched us in some profound and powerful ways, but also in some subtle ways. One of the enduring qualities of John and his large Irish Italian family was humor. A wry, witty humor, often employing one-liners to live with a straight face and no warning, but always followed by a smile and a laugh. His one-liners could turn a tough time into a smile. The master of this brand of the alto humor was John's late mother, Pat, but it could be delivered by any alto belly at any time. The one-liners and laughing with alto is just one of many things that I will miss about him, but that will ever, forever be a part of me. For those of us that were fortunate enough to have Alto, Carrie, and Alyssa as part of our lives, we were truly blessed. For those that didn't get to meet them or spend time with them, I hope that the stories you hear today, the positive messages of how they lived their lives and made life better for those around them, will in some way touch you and be a positive influence on how you live your life. I am certain it is a message they would want to be told in their memory. Forever a pirate. Thank you. Thank you, JJ, Lexi, and Kylie for this honor today. I'd like to begin with a quote that I feel summarizes the essence of my best friend, Carrie. When you give yourself permission to communicate what matters to you in every situation, you will have peace despite rejection and disapproval. Putting a voice to your soul helps you let go of the negative energy of fear and regret. I'm Lori Lieber, and Carrie was not only my bestie for 30 years, she was also my mentor, something I don't think I ever told her. As I reflect back on the life that Carrie lived, I can confidently say that she had great conviction, conviction and she made no apologies. She never settled, and she definitely left this earth without regret. 
While I still want to believe that this is a bad dream, I know it's true. In an instant, on the morning of January 26, the world lost nine important people. John, Carrie, Alyssa, Kobe, Gianna, Peyton, Sarah, Christina, and Ara. Thank you all for coming today to celebrate these three amazing people, John, Carrie, and Alyssa. This afternoon, I'd like to share with you some of the special qualities that I admired in my best friend, Carrie. To begin with, Carrie was tough. She and I met through work about 30 years ago, and we didn't exactly hit it off right away. As a matter of fact, she scared the living crack out of, crap out of me. This is something we often joked about. One of the last quote memes she texted me was, and I'm sorry, this is inappropriate, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Every good friendship starts with, when I first saw you, I thought you were a bitch. For Carrie and I, this was 100% true. Carrie treated me like a sister. Fortunately for me, our paths crossed again after that rocky initial introduction, and we found ourselves traveling together for business, where we had plenty of time to warm up to each other. I thank God that he didn't allow me to judge a book by its cover, because when I had the opportunity to read all the pages, I found my best friend, who truly felt like a sister. Carrie was a true mentor to a lot of people. As I mentioned, I don't think that Carrie knew I saw her as a mentor, and I wish that I would have told her so. I admired how she embraced a strong set of values to which she held herself and everyone in her circle accountable. No mistaking it, Carrie was brutally honest and straightforward. I was in awe of her determination to overcome the adversity and sadness she had experience in her childhood in order to build the life and family with Alto that she always wanted. Through her example, she taught me how to live with conviction and how not to fall prey to being the victim, ever. Carrie was loyal and had a small, tight inner circle of friends. Her main focus was her family, so her inner circle of friends was tight. Carrie was private, she didn't let a lot of people in. Deep down, Carrie was loving and extremely loyal. I was honored to be a part of her inner circle and to have the opportunity to see Carrie from the inside out. It was because of this intense loyalty, along with her strong set of values and her love of God, my husband Dave and I chose Carrie to be the godmother to our one-year-old son, Xander. I know without a shadow of a doubt, she is still looking out for Xander. I had the privilege of experiencing many major life events with Carrie, where we shared many laughs and many tears. From marriage to divorce, birth to death, disappointment and triumphs, vacations, holiday work, and so much more. There was one particular instance, actually probably multiple, when I know I felt Carrie, and I really let her down. In spite of that, she was still there for me when I needed her. That's the thing about friendship. You can laugh, support, fight, and fail each other. Yet, the love and bond forever stays intact. Our friendship truly stood the test of time. Carrie was focused, and her only mission was to be a great wife, mother, and friend. I looked up to Carrie because of how she thoughtfully placed her marriage as a solid foundation on which she built her family. She even went as far as telling me that without Alto, the pieces to her precisely crafted puzzle of a life would disassemble. Without a doubt, Derry, Carrie had an unwavering love for and dedication for her family. It was clear that she woke up each day devoted, devoted to supporting and honoring her husband and three children. Her family was all she truly cared about. She was a proud wife and mother who supported and bragged about her family every 
second she got. It was no secret to Carrie's friends that if you wanted to see her, you needed to come over to their house because she didn't want to sacrifice any time away from her family. And guess what? The kids felt the same way too. Carrie's devotion to her family was admirable. Carrie embraced everything her family did. As her girls grew up, their personal passions became Carrie's passions. Managing, managing the family schedule with baseball commitments for Alto, basketball for Alyssa, tennis and academics for Lexi, supporting JJ as he pursued a career in baseball like his dad, and the demands of Carrie's own business left little time for anything else. Often it was at the expense of spending time with others, but that's how Carrie wanted to do it, and she did it without regret. From the day she met Alto, she engulfed herself in baseball and attended every single game, both home and away, making sure their two young girls were always with them. She immediately embraced JJ as her son and loved him like he was her own. As her best friend and a new mom, I can tell you that watching her do this effortlessly was nothing short of amazing. Carrie lived her truth boldly without apologies. Carrie was one of the bravest and unabashed people I've ever known. She could be described as strong, direct, real, unapologetically bold, hardworking, and brutally honest because she cared. She stood up for herself, her family, and her close inner circle. If you knew Carrie, you knew not to mess with her, her family, or those close to her. She was a force to be reckoned with, the queen of follow through. Even the dogs knew not to mess with Carrie. Without a doubt, her conviction to stay true to herself was so strong that she never let the opinions of others change who she was or influence her next move. Carrie oftentimes came across as if she didn't care what others thought of her boldness but I know for certain she cared deeply. She was just protecting the den. I'm confident that Carrie lived a life of significance rather than regret, knowing in her heart that she left the world better than she found it, knowing that she made a difference in the lives of those in her inner circle, knowing that she spent her last day on earth doing exactly what she loved, going to a basketball game, game with her bright light of a daughter, Alyssa, alongside her warm and funny husband, Alto. And finally, knowing that she created something beautiful in the legacy of her family. JJ, Lexi, Carly, remember, once a family, always a family. You guys are always close, whether on earth and then in heaven. You guys were always together, and ride or die, and here you are, and you're still there. Thank you so much. AKA, my baseball family. I actually met Alto Belli, Alto, in the summer of 1975. He was 12, I was 15. My summer job in high school was with Harbor Area Baseball, coaching and working clinics across paths for many years. High school at Newport Harbor, 
We both played at Golden West with Coach Fred Hoover. I would stop by UCI when he coached there. And when he started to coach, I would stop by also. In 2002, I told him my son, Junior, was interested in playing at Coast. Junior earned the opportunity to play for Alto. At the end of the 2004 season, Alto asked me if I'd like to coach for Coast. I started in the fall of 2004 and finished a great run with Alto in 2019. If it wasn't for him, I never would have had the opportunity to get, to get back to the game and meet, and meet my best friends. On January 22nd, I had a dream I was coaching with Walter. On the 23rd, he texted me, and all he said was, miss you. So I texted him back that I had been dreaming about coaching with him. I asked him how the team was looking. Are you scrimmaging at 10 o'clock on Saturday? He said the team looks good. Yes, we're scrimmaging at 10. Hope to see you Saturday. I told him I was planning on coming by to see him. I was at the field Saturday for about three hours, just talking with a few people and Alto. And when it was time to say goodbye, I said, I'll see you Tuesday for opening day. That was the last time we talked. Please remember Alto for all the special moments he gave us. He always treated me as if I was his brother. He embraced my family as if they were his. Thank you, Alto, for the opportunity. I love you. I love you, my friend. husbands, brothers, and sons, teachers, teachers, coaches, CEOs, and mentors. Skills to help navigate a professional world filled with executive meetings or career fighting fires and helping others. The career path didn't matter. It was always translated. In the alter world of teaching, there was never a wasted lesson. There was never a time he said something to you that you didn't expect it to be consumed, digested, and utilized. He was strategic in his teachings. He gave you what he knew you could handle, and that was usually more than what you thought you could. He polished your strengths, and he mitigated your weaknesses. He wasn't a great coach because he knew the X's and O's better than anybody else, or because he knew when to steal, hit and run, or bunt. Hell, he was pretty conservative when it came to offensive action. He was great because he could take 40 people and convince them to all pull the rope in the same direction and to pull it in the precise way that he had taught them. He possessed a rare quality, a quality shared by only the greatest of leaders, the quality of successful leadership. It's not simply the ability to lead, but the ability to get others to follow willingly and in a way that achieves the greatest goals. The percentage of great leaders is small, but the percentage of successful leaders is even smaller. He was the best of the best, the top gun. He was a winner and he hated to lose more than he liked to win. And he wanted it plain vanilla 
no sprinkles, no cherry. He taught people to be a fountain and to spread positive energy, not a drain that would suck the life out of a team. He was my coach, my mentor, and my friend. Not a day goes by that I don't use a skill that he taught me. I will never be the same man that I was two weeks ago. I will be better because even today, standing up here, he is teaching me still. Forever Pirate. Derek Sanders. Carrie was my sister. 
Alto was my brother-in-law, and Alyssa was my niece. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank and acknowledge everyone for making this memorial possible. Thank you all for your time, planning, thoughtfulness, donations, and empathy. Completing something like this under the best of circumstances is nothing short of exceptional. Managing it under the duress of the current conditions is simply remarkable. Thank you all so much for your extraordinary care. I want to offer my most sincere condolences and prayers to the Bryants, the Chesters, the Mausers, and the Zavians. All of us lost mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sisters, brothers, family, friends, and loved ones. It requires no emphasis that this tragedy is forever indelibly marked on our hearts. I'm incredibly saddened and devastated by these losses. My thoughts and prayers are with you all, individually and collectively. Briefly, my family. Carrie was my sister. Uh, she's two years younger than me and has been the closest person in my life for the last 46 years. Carrie was a courageous, loyal, hardworking, caring friend, sister, and mother. She worked hard in school, was always a very loyal friend, and later an exemplary employee. She met Alto and was married. The two of them invited me into their lives as Carrie approached motherhood. Carrie worked tirelessly in support of this family. Simply, as uh, Lori already stated, for those that did not know her, Carrie was a force. An incredibly caring woman that exhibited passion in all areas of her life. My life was forever changed when uh, Alexis and Alyssa were born. I became an uncle. I was completely smitten. My heart was taken with these two amazing young people. I have rarely missed a weekend or an important family event in the last 16 years. Sundays became my favorite day of the week because of them. In my opinion, Alto was nothing short of a saint. Of course, this family loved and supported baseball. But in my relationship with Alto, I saw a man who sacrificed tremendously because of the love and devotion he had for his family. I never saw him exhibit his widely known fiery behavior on the field in their home. This was a cohesive family that laughed and evolved lovingly together. Graciously, Alto even put up with Uncle D. From my perspective, he was a spectacular father and husband. Frankly, we all idolized him. My niece, Alyssa, was nicknamed Love Bug by my mom before she passed away 14 years ago. Alyssa was super fun, an amazing friend to others, and embraced most things with ease and grace. She had the most infectious laugh. My fondest memories were our group hugs when we tickle each other mercilessly and laugh hysterically. Later, they teased me about uncomfortable Uncle D stories and stories their mom told them that I didn't remember, which often started a laugh fest amongst Alyssa, Alexis, and me. Alyssa was a naturally gifted athlete, in my opinion. I loved watching both girls play sports and rarely missed events. Thankfully, I was tolerated. Those that know me know what I mean. I adore these girls and love spending time with this family. I know that they meant, I know that they knew they were everything to me. And I'm so grateful I got to spend my time. I'm forever gonna miss our times together. 
My brew baby life's devotion will be Deluxe. Excuse me. As I close, I want to express how grateful I am for everyone reaching out and supporting JJ and Alexis. All the prayers, cards, messages, meals, and generosity. It has been an incredible display of love and support. I truly have no time or words to thank you enough. While the lives of Carrie, Alto, and Alyssa are lost to this physical world in which we live, as evident in the world outpouring of love and support, their individual legacies of courage, loyalty, family, fortitude, laughter, and love will live in and through us all. With our remaining time, my hope is that we are challenged to wake up, serve, and carry these legacies in our hearts, thoughts, and actions, thus ensuring that their spirits will remain here with us. Our beloved family and friends are gone, but they will not be forgotten. Thank you all so much for being here today. so many lives in so many ways. A family that I've, I felt a part of. Alto is not just a coach. He was a dad to JJ, Melissa, Lexi, and a loving husband to Kay. He was also a dear friend to me and my family. He was my mentor and ultimately like my big brother. Kay, as we called her, was a firecracker, and she was Alta's biggest fan. You could just see the way she lit up when she talked about him. If you knew Kay like we did, she would let you know exactly where you stood with her. She was not afraid to speak her mind. She loved Alto and her kids just the same, and that would just resonate for I always enjoyed to get Kay fired up. I would tease her and say, Alto and the boys are taking a trip to Vegas, as we often did. But Kay would fire back, yeah, right, Milo. You see, Kay knew that when Alto and the boys got together, there was a chance for a hangover sequel. Our kids grew up together while I was an assistant coach for Alto. And we were fortunate to see JJ, Lexi, and Alyssa all grow up. I can remember our old team photos with JJ right in the middle, sitting on someone's shoulders. We had a designated room at their house that also called the Velo Suite, which was just JJ's room, but he was gone for the night. Our kids would have their slumber party, and the big kids would indulge in a little Captain Morgan, watch movies that typically, typically consisted of old school, Super bad and wedding crashers. Alto loved to recite one liners. He would recite them that all in the know would get a laugh from. We would call each other or text each other those one liners back and forth. If you ever got to hang out with Alto and watch a comedy flick, he would start to laugh and laugh so hard that the laugh turned to tears, and oftentimes we couldn't breathe from crying that ensued. 
As the kids have gotten older and life happens, we did not each see each other as often as we have, would have liked to. We would often catch up over a text, a phone call, or through JJ when I would, whenever I would see him on the scouting trail. So I always felt connected and up to date with the family no matter what. Alta was so proud of his family. And he would tell me about Alyssa and her basketball, and of course her awesome coach. He brought Lexi this summer to the area code game so she can network with baseball coaches and scouts as she has aspirations to work in the game. He talked about Kay being busy working for her uncle's business. He was also excited about JJ's scouting career, and you could just tell how proud he was of his family. I'm going to miss going to OCC and walking over the dugout to see Alta, which was always my first stop. I would then make my way to what I called Kay's VIP section down the first baseline where you could see her sitting in a chair with the girls and watching the game. I always felt special when I went over there because Kay would give me a hug and not a dirty look. When I think of Alto, I think of selfless. He was always helping his family, friends, and players. The impact he made on so many young men's lives will truly never be measured. We can tally his 700 plus wins, his four state championships, and his 100 ejections. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm not sure how many he actually had, but he had his fair share when his alter ego, Norman, would come out. <laughs> but we have no clue how many teachers, police officers, firefighters, dads, and husbands that he helped develop along the way. Those are the wins that he cherished the most. And to see his players come back and thank him for making an impact on their lives is what mattered to him. I owe so much to Alto because he gave me my first opportunity to coach and got me started as a 23-year-old in the game that I love. He showed me how to do things right, and he showed me how to do it with class and dignity. He pushed me to go back to school and get my degrees, and he even helped me pay for some of it. I will forever be grateful for the advice, direction, and leadership that he provided me with. So it's only fitting that Kay, Alyssa, are being honored, and also, of course, are being honored at a major league stadium. They were truly major league people. I can continue to tell stories and share memories of the wonderful times that we spent on and off the field as my head is full of them. I think about JJ and Carly this summer as they're gonna walk down the aisle and Lexi graduating high school and heading off to college next year and how special those times are supposed to be. For them, they will still be special, but they will also have a huge void that none of us could ever fill. We know we can never replace those amazing people, but we'll do our best to be there for you. So what now? Squeeze your loved ones, enjoy today, and remember how precious life is. As much as we plan and prepare for tomorrow, the one thing that is evident to me is that tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Life gives us so much joy and happiness but it can also give us pain and heartache. I wrote something down the other day that I think all of us can use in those times of sadness. When it starts to hurt, just remember the laughs and the good times Alto K and Alyssa left with us. When you cry, be sure, dry your eyes. Better days are sure to come. And when you smile, be sure to smile wide. And don't let them know that they have won. And when you walk, walk with pride. Don't show the hurt inside, because the pain will soon be gone. And when you dream, dream be. Big as the ocean When you dream it might come true When you dream, dream
Scary getting up here. So I'm here to kind of go over our relationship with Alyssa. Um, we've been friends a long time, ever since she was this high to a grasshopper. And, um, well anyway, I'll just get right into it. And I want to say, if there comes a day when we can't be together, Alyssa, I will keep you in my heart. You will stay there forever. Dear Alyssa, you will forever be in our hearts. Your cute giggles and sweet smile, along with those beautiful eyes that would lighten up a room. It was a special bond we shared. When I would ask, who wants to get a bonsai bowl? We had fun. We enjoyed our bonsai bowls. I also look forward to watching you play on Sundays. You once told Annie, are you coming? And Annie said, yeah, you know, we'd like to come. And she said, it's gonna cost money. And Annie said, how much? And she said, 10 bucks. And we said, oh, okay, we can afford that. Are you worth it? And she says, heck yeah. Anyway, it was fun watching you play. And I thought I'd throw in, go Mambas! I would like to tell you how honored I was that you picked me to interview for your school project, Living Legacies. I enjoyed sharing my life growing up in Hawaii, along with my professional journey that brought me to Southern California. You wrote an amazing story for our, from our interview, and I was so proud of you. You will always be in my heart. Love you forever. Dream big, little one. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here for Alto. This family means more to my family than life itself sometimes. You know, what they teach everybody here today is, you know, hug your loved one a little tighter, just for a little bit longer. Love fiercely, like Kay did. Like, like him, that there's no tomorrow. And then there's Alto. Somebody that we can always look up to. Somebody that I know will always be watching all of us. He's our captain. He is our, our rock. He is that guy that we're gonna raise up, that captain Diet Coke in line for. Him. And on the other hand, have that Coors Light double fisted, raising up to you, Alto. This family, my friends, my baseball family, all of you are part of this ship, part of this, this pirate ship, because we're all forever pirates. Love you guys. Thank you. Alto really would have loved this if we're at, if it were at Wrigley Field. Big Cubs fan, but Angels, thank you very much. This is awesome. Um, I heard there's a big section of umpires here. Where are you guys? I'm assuming you're all here to say you blew the call and Alto was right. <laughs> so if you want to come up one by one, <laughs> he would love that. 
Um, Lexi asked me to pick a song that reminded her of her dad. And I'm like, we weren't dating. We had a song. So my first thought was, obviously, Captain and Tennille must grant love. Then I was like, wait a second, maybe it was the Carpenters close to you. And I realized those were all those terrible songs Alto's brother Toad would play when we took in and out at Orange Coast. It's just to fire us up. Um, but I chose that song, Drink a Beer. I mean, if you listen to the words, it's the worst, but you know, we're pretty good at drinking a beer, plural, beers. Uh, that's why I picked it. Um, I'd like to commend the uh, Orange Coast College baseball coaching staff and support staff um, on how well they handled themselves in this tough time and how they honored Alto and his family. So, Tim, where are you? Matt, I don't even know where I am right now. I can't even see it. Uh, all the boys, there you are. Uh, Matt, JB, Kent, even the Pia's, the GoFundMe, that was unbelievable, right? Um, I think I'm forgetting, oh yeah, Nate. Uh, so, job well done. Um, you guys hand up with honor, class, and integrity. He'd be very proud. Um, not, Carrie would be pissed you guys are two and five. Like pissed, okay? So let's get that squared away. Um, but honestly, I think your club will be fine. There's no handbook on how to handle this situation. I think the most important thing is to just continue to help those young men heal, um, help your staff and their families heal. Um, that's more important than any win, I believe, in this situation. And um, I don't think we're all here because Alto had four state titles and 705 wins. Um, I think we're here because he exemplified what a coach was, uh, what a coach should be. He definitely dedicated his life to his craft. He loved it. He was very good at it. Um, there's just, just a lot of things that go into being a coach, and I love saying it because it's not just rolling the balls out there and writing the lineup and, and the guys with the best players win. Um, he's a man of high character, selfless, put others first. He was a leader, um, motivator, father figure, family man, a great dad, great dad. <clears throat> Competitor. A listener, a lifelong learner. He was like a kid at the convention. I'm gonna go listen to Harold Reynolds talk about base running. And he told like seven Ricky Henderson stories and we learned nothing, but Ricky Henderson was awesome. <laughs> um, he was a role model involved in his community. He always created a family environment for his team. That was very evident when he played him. Uh, he truly cared about his players and loved to talk about them. Last text I got from Alto was Sunday morning at 8 a.m. selling one of his players. Any of you guys that played for Alto ever played for Alto? He did an amazing job evaluating you um, and selling you properly. Um, he took a lot of pride in that. Um, he was an amateur gardener, an amateur astroturf farmer, uh, and an amateur locker room builder. Um, I'm not going to throw him under the bus right now, sorry. Um, and lastly, he always put together one hell of a supporting cast and his assistant coaches. Um, these are guys who can coach anywhere in America, and they chose to coach with Alto. So I think that says a lot. Um, again, we're not here because he won all those games. We're here because he did his job well. He did his job the right way. And he was very good at it. And in that process, he impacted and changed a ton of lives in the process. Um, a little bit about our history. We're basically like two third graders that hung out a lot. Um, that's how we act when we hang out. We met in the early 2000s. Um, 
we meet at home play and talk. Then we get into scheduling and phone calls, and then we realized that we had a lot of similarities. We had a deep love and appreciation for umpires. <laughs> we both had rigorous teaching schedules as community college professors. He taught ping pong, or you better call it table tennis, he'd get pissed, it's table tennis. Uh, I taught surfing, he taught golf, I taught golf. He taught CPR, I taught CPR. He taught rock climbing, and that's where I drew the line. <laughs> um, we both had two beautiful wives who supported us in our chase of this beautiful game of baseball. We both had two beautiful daughters who loved being around the ballpark with their dads. And I think that's truly where our connection began. Our girls had similar hobbies, surf, snowboarding, anything beach, sports. And our visits at home play turned into trips. We'd go paddleboarding at Newport, jump off the bridge, and hey, come up and jump off the bridge at Alamo Island. Awesome, I'm in. I jumped off 15 times. Alto sat on the beach in his chair, pointed his knee. <laughs> Drank all my beers. Snowboarding trips, Big Bear, Snap, you're the man, I don't know where you're at. Can't see anyone again. Appreciate you taking care of us. We've got snow in up there. Um, Carrie almost drowned a girl, a uh, lady, not a girl, I'm sorry, uh, at Harris. I think JJ was her birthday-ish. Went to Harris Casino. And all of a I went and got a cocktail at the Swim Up Bar, and a couple girls came over. I'm like, hey. And pretty much shoved her head in the water and talked all to her. She had it coming. She had it coming. Um, but we always had a great time. Our kids always had a great time. Okay, I got a couple top threes and I'll get out of here. Um, top three repeated texts from Alto. We sent a lot of texts. Code Red, need your Netflix or Hulu account. <laughs> Girls are freaking out. I don't know how you guys always lost it, but it's there forever. You can always have it, okay? You have to text me and ask for it. You'll probably be able to keep it. You won't. Um, and the random bit emojis. I think we spoke for two weeks straight without even using a word, just pictures of one another. He loved his bit emojis. Pirate Alto, Cub Fan Alto, Dabbing Alto. Eye patch Alto, Snow Globe Alto, Christmas Ornament Alto, Alto on the Turkey. Um, I saved them all, they're the best. Um, and then my favorite, I don't know why, you know, you know, come by the house, we'll watch JJ play. And I, I'm in on that, right? But he ended it with, and we'll get blackout drunk. <laughs> like, hey, JJ, I don't think you were that bad at baseball, your dad was blackout drunk. But. Um, <laughs> I think he was just trying to get me over there to say, like, hey, I would, like, like, I would steer me the other way. I didn't want to get blacked out. Um, but we'd watch you play on the worst laptop computer on the kitchen counter, and you go 0-2, or you get 0-2 count, carry getting pissed. I can't change it. <laughs> they were all your biggest fans. They loved watching you play anytime they could. We always had a blast doing it. Uh, top three memories of Alto, watching his team, team win a state championship in 2009 when he was standing on a milk crate with me outside the right field gate or fence. They wouldn't let him be in the stadium because he got kicked out too many times that year. Um, but it says a lot. That team played for him. He couldn't be in the dugout. and Other teams were so afraid that for him to even be in the stadium, they kicked him out. So it was 110 degrees, we were standing on milk crates, looking over the fence, watching this team just crush everyone in 2009. Um, second memory is our parking lot game. I was ejected on a Tuesday. I called Alto, said, hey man, I'm so sorry we're playing you Thursday, I'm not gonna be able to coach against you. I'd, I'd love going up there and playing those guys. He goes, that's all right, man, well, you know, you guys will battle. 
He calls me Wednesday night. All right, I got ejected too, so. <laughs> we, both, uh, we both watched in our cars like a couple of cops. <laughs> in the parking lot at Orange Coast. Watched our teams play. Watched my guys throw it away in the ninth. Back picked the first, he called it. We threw it down the line, they won. Um, top three things I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss the post game hang in there. they are great jobs. You have a tough game and you just wanna talk to someone, I get to my office and he'd, he'd already called. Hang in there, everything's gonna be all right. You guys are a good club. He was really good at that. Gonna miss just having a beer with my buddy. And Bilo mentioned this is anytime you go to that park looking down the right field line and not seeing all three of the girls in the right field or all throwing his dug out. JJ Lexi, I appreciate you letting me do this. So there's no way I thought I could do it. Um, I know the time you had together with all of them doesn't seem like it's enough, but I know you'll cherish it. You two are strong enough to work through this. I'm just, I mean, you look around, you have the support um, of so many great families and friends and people here. Um, I just want to make sure you guys completely understand that you're always a part of our family. I know your dad would have done the same for me. We love you too. Our family loves you too. Their memories will always be in our hearts. And I'm not going to say forever a pirate because I wasn't, so I'm just going to say forever a friend. Thank you. I almost forgot this. Uh, without further ado, this is Alyssa's And One Mixtape highlight video. Stop looking at me. something no one could ever take away from her. 
Every day we play together. I will never forget her passion and dedication to the game. No matter how many times she got knocked down, she always got up stronger and fought harder. Every day she was always the first to practice, being at least 30 minutes early. Whenever practice was canceled, she still managed to find her way to the gym. Whether it was at OCC with her dad or a call in to see if she could get into Sage's gym, she was determined to get her time in. Alyssa was not only a great player, she was an amazing teammate. She supported our team and inspired us to become the best players we could possibly be. If anyone was in a bad mood at practice, she would smile and laugh to help brighten the day. Without her, our team will never be the same. We shared not only the love of the sport, but the love of the Ducks. Some of the fondest memories we had together were because of the love that we had for Oregon. Our time spent at the games together with Gigi as Coach Bryant broke down the game for us. And as we tried to make Gigi even think for a second about going to Oregon with us after high school, as we had a plan on going to Oregon together and being a force to be reckoned with. I don't think Gigi was ever going to budge from her dream of UConn. The memories we had together will always be with me. Our countless hours we spent studying and preparing for the test to get into SAGE, our dreaded tutoring sessions, and our anxiety we had before taking the test. I always knew that you had nothing to worry about. I mean, you were Alyssa, the smartest and most caring person in the room. And so many more memories. Our instant basketball practices and games where we made, made sure to wear matching shoes in true Mamba form. The ballet lessons I tried to teach you, the laugh that you had every time I performed it. How you and Gigi would always tease me about my posture as I tried, always tried to stand up straighter. How you loved Dutch Bros and always told me that one day you wanted to open a store down here so you can enjoy the muffin tops you always said were the best. Your sarcastic smirk and that smile that lit up the room. These and many more memories will always be with me. I will not only continue to work harder, but I will work for you. This was our dream and I will live it for the both of us. I know that this is not goodbye, but until we meet again, I promise I will make you the proudest I can. Fly high, my angel. Fiercely loyal. Above anything, Carrie was fiercely loyal. She was fiercely loyal to her family. She loved and protected Alta, Lexi, Alyssa, and JJ. She was always there when needed. She shared Alta's passion for baseball and would share in as many of his games as possible, including that grand championship that was won last year. She was proud of her son JJ and his job recruiting for the Red Sox team, but even prouder that he found someone as wonderful as Carly to soon call his wife. She was for the Newport Harbor tennis hat during Lexi's season. Talk about how proud she was of how hard Lexi worked in school, even sending a screenshot of those amazing grades. Go with Lexi to try her hand at boxing because it was something Lexi wanted to try. She would spend hours devoted to Alyssa's dream of playing basketball. She was the one there first, often the last to leave. She cared about what Alyssa wanted and was dedicated to making Alyssa's dreams come true. Her family was her everything. Where they were was where she wanted to be. She was fiercely loyal. She was fiercely loyal to her friends. I met the Alta Valley family back when our girls started playing basketball in third grade. There was an instant connection when I saw this family showing up to games in our beloved Oregon Duck gear. Little did I know where we would end up. Where we ended up was hours and hours and hours in the gym together. Hours watching our girls develop into the basketball players that they have become. Hours laughing or commiserating in the highs and lows of life. Talking about work, books, movies, our families, the future. Talking about how very lucky our families were to be in this position. How when these six years were over, we wouldn't know what to do with our time. How we should probably engrave our names onto plaques and attach them to our spots on those bleachers that we occupied almost nightly, just so people would remember our time spent there. Coach Bryant just smiled at that one. Little did he know we were very serious. And how at last, or at least, we may have some more basketball years together when our girls hit the, coach, or hit the court in Eugene. I call Kate fiercely loyal because through all these times, it was evident that she would do absolutely anything for those that she loved. 
When she had your back, you didn't need anyone else. She would be there in a moment's notice. She would gladly help you if needed. She would appreciate you and what you had to offer. She would give her all back. She cared deeply and strongly for those she loved. For Alto, Lexi, Alyssa, JJ, Carly, and Derek. For Coach Bryant, Coach Christina, our Mamba girls and our Mamba family. She was fiercely loyal to the end. And how incredibly blessed I am, my family is, to have known this love, to have known this strength, to know this loyalty, to have had a friend in Carrie. So Carrie, as you watch us up above, as you guide your family in this new life, please know that you are loved, you are missed. Enjoy those bleachers in the sky, my friend. Enjoy those beautiful girls up there playing basketball and our beloved coaches. Keep my spot next to you for me. And I'll keep your spot down here. Until then, my friend. First of all, I want to say, after watching that video, JJ, Alyssa can be. And I'm going to agree with Buck. The, emoji, the emojis we received were off the charts, all out of Well, I'm the closer tonight. And because of that, sometimes it takes a little longer to get those last three outs, especially if you're facing the West Coast teams out here. But wow, Southern California, your community has really stepped up. This is an unbelievable event for an unbelievable family, and we thank you. Thank you for being here today. Alto, Carrie, and Alyssa are definitely ingrained in this community. We mourn the losses of all nine victims. But today we come together to memorialize Alto, Carrie, and Alyssa, to wrap our thoughts around this tragedy, to believe that there is a better place and we will one day reunite with them all. Orange Coast College mourns the loss of all the victims, but in recognition of Alto, definitely named Pirates Park appropriately, the house that Alto built. But you see, John has been building his entire life. It could easily be called the people that Alto built. I have a very good friend in New Orleans. When I first met him, I said, hey, what do you do for a living? He said, I connect people. I said, wow, that's pretty good occupation. Alto has been building and connecting people his entire life. And today is a perfect example. We thank you, Alto, for bringing us again together. He has been a builder of families, as well as his family, friendships, colleagues, former teammates, and teams of young men. There's no doubt his purpose on this earth was to lead, build, and connect people. He 
represents greatness in all of us. He has pushed us all to a limit that we didn't think we could go. He's given us more, told us to push more, to be better, and to do the right things. Little Pia said it earlier, he's just a winner and was a winner. Winners lead great cultures. Alto created a winning culture with his former teammates at the University of Houston. I know this especially because I was one of them. He was my wingman. He was my brother. He was my go-to guy. He was not only my go-to guy, but the heart and soul of our team. He was our captain. He played right field, I played center field. I teased him all the time that he played the right field line and I played the right center field and center field. That's not like true. Dan Larson and Mark Grimes and Trey South, the second baseman and first baseman, also played right field. I want the University of Houston, that family, and anyone that represents the state of Texas to please stand up right now. University of Houston. This is that crew right there. We are all better because of Alto. And we all got better because Alto. He cherished these friendships. And 35 years later, halfway across the country, these relationships still remain. The University of Houston's head baseball coach, Todd Whitting, and his team will proudly award John Carey and Alyssa with an honorary life membership of the University of Houston Alumni Association. And today, February the 10th, 2020, the U of H Alumni Association flag will be flown at half staff for John Altabelli, remembered today. Thank you, Todd. Alto returned in 87 to coach at Houston, came back home to coach at UC Irvine, 88 to 92, and then became the head coach at OCC in, in 1992. As it's been documented, he won four state championships. The rest of the world played for a national championship because of so many junior colleges down the coast, they only played for a state championship, and I don't mean that by only. But I'm just trying to make sure that you understand the magnitude of winning a state championship in junior college baseball in California. In 09, 14, 15, and 19, they accomplished that, and they really had it rolling. He also accomplished a few bucket lists. He had an opportunity to work with the, the coach in the Cape Cod League. He bragged about working with such great players in that pres prestigious, prestigious league. He also had an opportunity to coach the summer of 2016 under George Horton with the USA Baseball. The collegiate national team won its first amateur series on Cuban soil ever. John Altabelli was this, but much more than anything, outside of his family, he was Orange Coast baseball. He was tough, he was fair, and he was not always loved by the umpires. It becomes a common theme tonight. It was just in his DNA because he fought for his players. Nothing personal 
to any umpire, just competitive juices. He never sold a player, to my knowledge, to a D Division I program or to a professional team. He never oversold them. His players earned their right to play. He taught them valuable lessons. OCC players lived up to a standard created by Alto. Forever power, forever a power. Pirate, I'm sorry. Forever a pirate, Alto. After the 2019 season, after winning the national championship, the ABCA Association named him the Junior College National Coach of the Year. And I remember, Alto was a very humbling guy, but he told me six times to make sure I'm in Tennessee and sitting on the front row to watch him receive that award. I did. It was very special. And I would also like to have all of those pirates, please stand up. I see you guys there. Any pirate in the past or in the present. That is what we talk about making a difference in society and making a difference in your community. Alto did so. He did it with great pride and great love. When JJ was born in 1990, he was a proud dad. He started again building, this time from the ground up. This one from the ground up, JJ, with great talent. Alto recognized it and spent the time with his son to maximize his talents, not only on the field, but off the field. This past summer, I was with Alto recruiting. We ate a late lunch. We went to watch Mamba practice, got to spend some time. We went back to the house at Carrie and the girls and waited with anticipation to see JJ and Carly come back in the house after the pr proposal. That was a special, special day. It was awesome to be a part of that day with their family and how excited he was, as well as Carrie. JJ and Carly know that their love and presence will be there this July. And we'll be there with you forever. So will we. Melissa was always tied to Lexi's hip. We would go to a dinner and you wouldn't even notice them. They would be in the corner just doing their own little thing. But they were there and they were tied together, except when she played basketball. The love that she had for the game, the challenges, the drive, how much she loved her teammates, how much she loved her coaches. She loved the competition, she loved the pride of being a part of Mamba basketball. Peyton, Gianna, and Melissa didn't have a chance to fulfill their dreams. But the memories will be etched in all of us as we take the field and take the court. Melissa loves you. She loved those teammates. Go out and make Gianna and Peyton and Alyssa proud.
We were telling some stories last night in the hotel. I had hoped to get some sleep, but I didn't. We stayed up till about two. But one came up about Alto's first meeting with Kerry. And in his own little way, he signed a baseball with his phone number on it. And he said, call me for our first date. She said, the hell with that. With that date, I'm gonna marry you. And she did. And she became John's assistant head coach for life. She knew her calling then. Her partner for life was out though. And they became best friends. The joy of her life was Lexi and Alyssa. She was a great mom, a great wife. And as Alto does, they did it together. They built a wonderful family. We have one special one that we've got to take care of, and that's Lexi. She's quiet. She's very unique and adventurous, much like her dad, except the quiet part. She will strive to do great things. I know that. And she will accomplish great things. And our commitment to you will always be second to none. We love you. We love you, JJ, and we love you, Carly. And we'll be there for you. In closing, Alto, Kay, Lissa, will be greatly missed. Alto and Kay were great parents. Alto was a great friend who brought a piece of California to us in Texas. And we sent him home with country and western music, dancing, boots, beer, and barbecue. He connected us. That's what he did. That's what he's done. He's connected all of us. This coming Friday, the Division I baseball programs open up. How ironic. It's the 14th. It was our goal to have 14 seconds of silence throughout the country. I hope it happens. <laughs> Anaheim Stadium couldn't be more appropriate because all of those angels are looking over us. No doubt. All the great ones are recognized by one name, Alto, Kobe, impressive. We'll always remember them. They'll be in our hearts forever and ever. But Alto and I used to text pretty frequently, and it usually ended with something to do with the Pirates or something to do with the Horns, something like this, Hook'em Pirates. Thank you, guys.
a mental picture of the love. And so if you would please turn on your phone lights and shine them towards the stage and show your light for the ones that we love so dearly. So in one last thing in alto fashion as we leave tonight, please, please turn to somebody and give them a big hug. We love you guys. Thank you for coming and honoring this family today. Please drive safely and God bless you.